Here after the tragic deaths of a pair of Sioux City pitchers, Steve Schultz and Paul McGann. The batter, Duck Chase. Payless right fielder fanned his first time up. White struggled a bit in the first and in the second, but Victoria could not score, and then he set him down in order in the third. First pitch misses outside and high for a ball, 1-0. White getting the sign from catcher Tim Wall as Chase looks out at Michael's delivery. Swing ground ball, Kernig into his left, spears it, tosses to first for the out, and there's one away. And that's some of the defense you're used to seeing from this Sioux City ball club after a shaky first couple of innings. They're known for the defense as well as being a good hitting team. Here we show Marty Kernigan on the hard ground ball to his left. Good range there, one hands it. Plenty of time now to straighten up and throw the batter out of first base. Here's Rocky Vitale. Base hit his first time up, lines one to center, but it's gonna stay up for Boyer who makes the catch for out number two. Ball hit hard by Vitale, but Boyer right there to make the catch in center field for the second out. So two down now for Anthony Bertoya, who walked his first time up. The shortstop, Tony Bertoya. And you see Michael White starting to settle into a groove. He has retired six batters in a row. There's a strike on the inside corner, 0-1. Well, I tell you what, the performance that he put together in 1987 to lead Cedar Rapids to the ISC championship when the tournament was held in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan was outstanding. Drop ball low, one and one. As a matter of fact, he worked so hard in that tournament that in the offseason, he needed to have reconstructive surgery on his shoulder. Had major shoulder surgery shortly after that, but he's bounced back in fine form. <laughs> Swung on, looper down the left field line, and it drops in foul. One ball, two strikes. Well, that tournament five years ago, with the weather delightful in Salt Lake this week, that week, in Saskatoon, what was it? No higher than 52, 53 degrees during the day. It was only fitting that the tournament was being played in Gordy Howe Park. <laughs> Extremely cold there. Steve Schultz and Paul McGann were calling to me in California wanting some long wool, long sleeve undersheaves. A ball and two strikes. Michael White in control, leading three to nothing here in the fourth. The 0-2 waves and misses at the change. The drop third strike. They'll toss to first to make the out official, and that retires the side. That's strikeout number four for Michael White in the ball game. We've reached the halfway point of a scheduled seven-rounder with a score, NHCD three, and pay less nothing. This is an effort to reach men and women who served in the United States Armed Forces. It concerns benefits reserved exclusively for honorably discharged veterans aged 30 to 75. Please use the toll-free number to respond. Call now for free information on a veterans-only life insurance plan that costs just $1 a week. When you qualify, you lock in the highest possible benefit amount available to you. These veterans' life insurance benefits are guaranteed never to go down. You are eligible if you served during peacetime or war active duty or reserves, or any branch of service. Call now and you'll also get a free guide to veterans benefits that explains government benefits you may be entitled to collect. Only veterans, their spouses and widows aged 30 to 75 qualify for this exclusive offer. Term life insurance for just one dollar a week. Don't wait. Call this toll-free number now for your free information and free guide to veterans benefits from Veterans Life Insurance Company. Nationals this week on Prime. All right, we go to the bottom of the fourth, and this is the place, the Salt Lake Valley here, and we're at the Cottonwood Complex. Boy, a gorgeous setting, the Great Salt Lake in the background. 
mountain ranges, the Wasatch to the east, the Oakers to the west. And in the center of the diamond, it's Mike Pieknik delivering a hard rise ball for a strike 0 and 1 as Rubley couldn't catch up with it. Fanned his first time up. Pieknik's jab trying to hold Sioux City. There's the bunt. Badovinek charges, throws low. Does he get over there in time? Yes, Bobby Court sliding into first base, catches it while on the ground and gets the out. Boy, an excellent job by Bobby Court getting over there, Ron. Here we go again. Bun on a high rise ball out of the zone, but third baseman picks it up. Throws the first. Bobby Court slides into second base, making the catch at the same time, just ahead of Rubley running down that first baseline. A fine play by second baseman. So one out for Randy Burnside, who bounced to third his first time up. Another chopper to third. This one foul for strike one. And a lot of responsibility on the second baseman in this sport. A lot of times a grounder to the first baseman in baseball, the pitcher will cover. Here in fast pitch softball, the second baseman has to be able to get over to the bag. Swings and misses, and the count goes to 0 and 2. Yeknik has allowed two hits, the three runs, struck out four, and walked one. Nice ball up and in. One and two, the count on Randy Burnside. Slowed down a little bit, but for many years, one of the top power hitters in this sport. Burnside, the 1989 most valuable player in this ISC tournament as a member of the Sioux City team. Now the one, two. A little bit inside, that evens the count at two and two. In fact, a look back in the record book shows that Seuss Titty, there's a picture of Randy, a first team All-American in 1991. Three called as Pieknik paints the corner about knee high. Strikeout number five for the Victoria left-hander and with two out the batter, Steve Carrion, who got the three-run third inning started with a long triple off the fence in center field. I started to mention earlier, Steve, that uh, Sioux City in the last four years has had the most valuable player in the IC tournament, so they've got quite a string running. First pitch to carry. A high ball, 1-0, and, and they've won three of the last four tournaments. Carrion with his feet spread apart. Takes and it's down and away for a ball. Two balls, no strikes. Steve, a softball vagabond of sorts, always a solid player, but doesn't stay anywhere very long. This is the second tour of duty for Sioux City. Miles that one back. He's played in Cedar Rapids. He's played in Decatur, among other places. But always a solid player. Never flashy, but always provides good, solid defense and a steady bat. Nicknamed the Hawk by his teammates. The 2 1 pitch. Down low for a ball, and it's 3 and 1. Playing second base now for Sioux City. Carrion wants a premier shortstop. There's a strike at the letters, and that fills the count at 3 and 2. Two outs, nobody on here in the bottom half of the fourth. Sioux City leading 3 to nothing. There's a drive to right center field. Chase going back, and it's off the base of the fence. Carrion rounding second. He may have another triple. They're going to wave him around. Here's the throw to the plate. He is good at the plate. Well, Ron, when you are ahead by three runs and there's two outs in an inning, you can take a gamble like that. It took a perfect relay throw to get him. Here it is again, Carrion driving the ball with good power to the right center field. Right fielder's back, but it's overhead, one hop to the wall. Center fielder Herford backing up. Gets the ball into relay man, Cork. The throw at his home plate. Just in time to get the sliding carry and trying to stretch it to an inside the park home run. With two outs, third base coach Kirk Odlin gambling all the way, sending carrying in, but the throw was right on the money. Good relay. Good block at the plate by Mattel. Sioux City leads three to nothing at the end of four. Now you can draw the roundest circles 
perfect straight lines in any direction, even complicated geometric patterns, perfect every time with the amazing rolling ruler. The secret tool of architects and draftsmen has two tire-like gripping rollers that keep the rolling ruler level as it speeds across your work. The special meter automatically indicates the distance between your lines. The rolling ruler makes professional looking office forms, charts, graphs, school projects come alive. Do geometry and trig faster and easier. Craftspeople find it irresistible. Dress patterns can be altered to any size. The handyman will love the built-in protractor for perfect angles or make beautiful curves and long straight lines that go on and on. Call or send for Rolling Ruler right now. Simply insert your pencil into any hole and roll straight lines, parallel lines. Insert two pencils and roll curves, arcs, and circles instantly. Redecorate like a professional. Replan your lawn and garden to perfect scale. Get results you'll be proud of. Kids love it just for doodling. Call or send 1298 to Rolling Ruler now. You'll also receive the amazing pantograph. Copy your favorite photos, cartoons, or designs to any size in just minutes. Finish with the confidence of a real artist. You'll impress yourself. Call or send now. You get the rolling ruler and the amazing pantograph for only $12.98. Order now. We go to the fifth inning now. NHCD leading by a score of three to nothing. A lot of activities go on at the International Softball Congress Tournament besides fast pitch softball and one of the more popular activities, pin trading. And play, uh, fans from all over the world get together and uh, trade pins of uh, different teams and different tournaments uh, all over the world. And it's uh, part of the fun and excitement of attending an International Softball Congress World Tournament. We hope to see you in Kimberley, Wisconsin next year in 1993 or Summerside, Prince Edward Island in 1994. Dave Batavinak to lead off the fifth floor Victoria. Little bat handle looper out in the short right center. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Boyer misplays it a little bit, but Stevenson's there to back it up and hold Batavinak to a single. That's just the third hit of the ball game for Victoria. Pretty good pitch run by Michael White. He jammed Batavinek, but he fought it off and dropped it into short center. Here we'll see it again. On the hands, as you said, Steve, in the shallow right center field out there in no man's land. With this big ballpark, the outfielders have to play a little bit deeper than normal. And this ball drops right in front. Boyer has trouble picking it up, so right fielder Todd Stevenson gets it back into the infield. So Batavinek out at first. The batter, Mark Makareth, who reached on an error his last go around, and he takes low for a ball, 1-0. So that snaps White String at seven consecutive batters retired. Runner at first, nobody out as White delivers. That one's down low for a ball, 2-0. and oh. And trailing by three runs here in the fifth inning with nobody out and a runner on first base, uh, Sioux City defense not looking for sacrifice bunt at this moment. Infield back, double play depth. 2-0 pitch. Right in there for a strike two and one. And some activities now down the left field line for Sioux City. Doug Middleton, Jimmy Seaman starting to warm up. 2-1 pitch to Makareff. Tapper foul, he just got a piece of the changeup and that evens the count. At two balls and two strikes. There's Middleton, former Lexington, Missouri right-hander, one of the outstanding American-born pitchers. 2-2 Two -two the count. White ready the pitch. Swing and a miss as Makareth couldn't hold up on the rise ball. Strikeout number five for Michael White, and with one out in the fifth, the batter will be the second baseman, Bobby Cord. And Ron, this is a question I get from a lot of the people new to the game, and you can explain it uh, for them. Why is it we have so many New Zealand pitchers in the sport? Well, New Zealand, of course, uh, as you don't play baseball in there, the kids grow up playing softball, and they develop these pitchers at a very young age. And of course, the seasons are opposite down there. It's wintertime now in New Zealand, summertime in the States. So many of these New Zealand players are able to play a season at home in New Zealand and also here in the States. One strike, the count on court. Michael White, one of those New Zealanders in the pitcher's circle. 
Now the 0 1. In at the knees, 0 and 2. Whitey's been around the United States and Canadian scene, though, for quite a while. Mike was a member of the 1988 NSF World Series gold medal winning team for New Zealand. Drop ball misses low and away, and the count goes to one and two. And of course, this year he also pitched for New Zealand in the Philippines when they won the silver medal, second place to the Canadian national team. On the one two, shot foul behind the plate. Three runs for Sioux City, all of them coming in the third inning. Victoria still waiting to get on the board. One, two, the count. White shakes off another sign from Tim Wall, and that's too much time out there, so Bobby Court asks for and receives timeout. Now the one, two. Outside of all two and two, both of these teams have had the opportunity to be host teams in this ISC tournament. Sioux City hosts in 1990, or 1986 rather, in 1991. Victoria hosted the 1990 tournament. Reaches out, swing foul tip into the glove of Tim Wall for the strikeout. And now Bob Buxlack, the third base coach, coming down saying that that one hit the dirt first. And so they're going to ask for help. They go to the third base umpire, Les Novak. If Tim Wall trapped the ball to the dirt and didn't catch it clean, it'll be a foul tip. Here, let's have a look at it now. Low drop ball, foul just over the top. Very close. Very close play to call. Very close play to call. And apparently going, they're going to give the call to Court. He's going to stay alive. The umpire is going to rule that it did hit the ground first. So the count is two and two with one out and a runner at first. The pitch. Run up and slap. White backhands. Looks to second. Gets the force. And that's all they'll get. As Batavinak comes in hard on Carey and at second base. Michael White, one of the better fielding New Zealand pitchers. Mike is a good fielder. Mike early in his career played some second base in softball in New Zealand, so he knows how to handle himself on the ground balls. In other words, he's one of the few New Zealand pitchers who can throw overhand. Two out and a runner at first for Jeff Herford. One for two. Flight out to left is last time up. I'm starting to run out for Payless. There's a pitch popped up. Foul ground. First baseman Sorensen puts it away, and that retires the side in the Victoria half of the fifth. No runs, one hit, one left. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. That remains N8 CD3 and pay less nothing. Slowing down, that ain't you. Uh -uh. No, no, that's not you. Easy drinking beer, that silver bullet smooth. seriousness it's a smile and a tear for the victory and to the defeated it's competition at its best on your source for sports prime network 
We head to the bottom of the fifth inning now. Sioux City leading by a score of three to nothing. It'll be David Boys, Bill Boyer, and Todd Stevenson due up to face Mike Pieknik. He has allowed three hits, three runs, striking out five and walking one to this point. Boys hits that one up and out of play behind home plate for strike one. Sioux City in their first year under the banner of National Health Care Discount trying to register another championship as the pitch is low for a ball one and one. They have become the New York Yankees of old the Montreal Canadiens of old the Boston Celtics of old and the world of fast pitch the team that most fans outside of Iowa love to hate. But that's a sign of some outstanding years of success for this Sioux City ball club when you get that kind of response from the opposing fans as the count goes to two and one. You hear comments all the time from other managers, coaches, and sponsors through the United States. There is some uh, bit of jealousy there, I think, of Sioux City's ability to come up with these great players. A little bit inside for a ball. Of course, the Sioux City Ball Club is sponsored by Ken Opstein, and he's uh, a man who has been used to being a winner for many, many years, not only in softball, but also in horse racing. Is Horse Gate Dancer won the 1984 Preakness as Boys cuts and missed for a strike and the count is full at three and two. So whether it's softball or horse racing, Opstein's passion is great with both sports as Boys cuts and misses for the strikeout. That is strikeout number six for Mike Pieknik. We'll go to the top of the order and Bill Boyer. Boy, are somewhat of a disappointment, but this will give you an idea of how strong the Sioux City Ball Club is. Boyer now is under 200 for an average for the tournament, but boy, this season he has been an outstanding player. Batting 433 with nine home runs from the leadoff spot. Those are indicative numbers of the type of player Billy Boyer really is. Thing is, though, he's in such a terrible slump in this tournament. It'll show you how strong this NHCD Ball Club is. Even though they're without really getting their leadoff man on base, they're still a powerful ball club and tough to beat. They have two players on their bench not even playing in the game that probably would start for 90% of the teams who entered this ISC tournament. Boyer takes a strike on the outside corner, and now it's 0-2. Those players being Doug Middleton and young Jared Martin, a young 19-year-old New Zealander who's got a tremendous bat. The 0-2 hit high in the air to shallow right, court the second baseman out, chase the right fielder in, and Chase has to run in and make the basket catch for out number two. And Chase playing back in right field run had to come a long way. The ball was hit high though. He had plenty of time to get underneath it. Court. Here's another look at it. Boyer popping the ball up in the shallow right field. Head down, running all the way. Court backing out to center right field. Is called off by the right fielder, and of course, that's the play the outfielders have to take charge with. That little fly ball over the infield. They've got a better angle running in on the ball, and of course, the infielder's going out to. Todd Stevenson struggling at the plate, slaps one towards the first baseman, Parks, and he touches it. It's a fair ball, and Stevenson's on it first. Clarkson tried to snare it out of the air and tag Todd Stevenson all in the same motion, and he mishandled the ball, and Stevenson reaches base. So Todd is aboard with two out for Marty Kernigan. Here's another look at it. Run up and slap a one hop, high hop to Daryl Clarkson. He tries to catch the ball and tag before he's actually fielded it. And Stevenson safe at first base on the air. Error number three on Victoria here in this championship game. And now the dangerous Marty Kernigan. Ball one is high, and Sioux City is a ball club, Ron. You can't give them any extra outs. You give one of these Sioux City hitters another chance to hit the ball, and you're going to get stung. 1-0 is high, ball two. Stevenson with excellent speed, so Vitale quickly out of his crouch, ready to throw if need be. Marty Kernigan, the 1985 ISC Most Valuable Player. Kernigan takes a strike. Two and one the count. 
A three run third inning is the difference in this one. And a botched up rundown, play the key part. High chopper, tough play, court has to hurry, and they get him at first. And that retires the side. Court was left standing helplessly waiting for that ball to come down. In the inning, no runs, an error, and one left. We've completed five, the score remains. Sioux City three and Victoria nothing. Excuse me, do you know what stock options are? I wish I did. When is a weak dollar good for business? Good? I don't know. The world of finance and investing can be pretty confusing, unless you call for this, the Wall Street Journal's Video Guide to Money and Markets. It explains the markets in clear, simple English and brings them to life. This exclusive 30-minute video is free when you call for 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal for just $37, over 20% off the newsstand price. Subscribe to the journal and get a daily view of the whole world of business and how it affects you. Information you know you should know. Call now and you'll be ready next time someone asks you, are munis always a safe investment? I'm not sure. Call toll-free 800-522-5333 for 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and your free video on money and markets. That's 800-522-5333. The Big 8. We've got it covered. All the angles. All the strategies. First and 10. Ten. Fourth and inches. The Big 8 Gridiron Report. All season on most Prime affiliates. We head to the sixth inning. Victoria Payless now with only six outs remaining before they run out of time in this championship game of the International Softball Congress World Tournament. They trail it by a score of three to nothing. But it's going to be awfully difficult to come back against the pitcher of the likes of Michael White, who so far in this ball game has allowed just three hits, striking out five and walking one. Victoria Ball Club met as a team outside the dugout. As they came in from the outfield, trying to rev themselves up and get back into this. Michael White is one of only four pitchers in ISC tournament history to have thrown two perfect games. And plus he has another three no hitters. So a total of five no hitters in ISC career tournament pitching as the pitch misses low for a ball. Aston trying to get something going here in the sixth. Low for a ball, 2-0. and oh. With his previous two wins in the tournament, Steve, Mike White has now moved into third place on the all-time most wins list in this ISC tournament with 33, trailing only Ty Stofflett and Peter Meredith. Chopper to the right side, carry in gloves, the underhand tosses in time for out number one. Seems like an awful long distance for Carrion to be tossing the ball underhanded. He had plenty of time on the ball, though. Got to him in a hurry. Playing second base, you have that luxury. Daryl Clarkson standing in. He's been up twice and fanned twice. That breeze again, blowing across from left to right. Drop ball low, so if Clarkson can pull one up into the air, maybe the wind can carry it out and get this Payless ball club going. White's one ball pitch. Pop up, foul, third base side out of play. That one's even the count at one ball and one strike. This is the championship game as we mentioned. The Clearwater Bombers out of Florida will finish third in this year's tournament. Fourth place belongs to the Vancouver British Columbia Magicians. So we're gonna